Now that we have our Google form created, we can turn it into a self-grading quiz. That way we can just send this out to a group of students, whether it be for pre-assessment, see what kids already know, it's to just introduce a topic. Uh, it could be for formative assessment reasons. You could have kids make their own Google forms and set them as quizzes and then share the links with you. And then you don't have to make review games uh, and review quizzes. The kids just have a whole bunch to use because you they've already all made them. Um, they can share them with each other and they can take each other's quizzes. It becomes a really, really beneficial and useful. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my Google form that I made a little bit earlier. And then I can do a few different things. And in order to just make it look nice, I can hit color palette and then I can just change a whole bunch of different stuff. I can choose any of these pictures from the Google library. Uh, and if I clicked on, uh, let's go with sports and games since there's stuff about hockey in here, Google started adding really cool stuff. Uh, there's little tiny gifts that they've included in here. So this is like soccer balls moving, this guy's shooting a basketball, uh, just adds a little kind of an extra piece of uh, like design to a Google form that makes it a little bit more interesting. Uh, once again, make sure, remember that it's all just saving and drive automatically as you go. Uh, you can preview the form, see what it looks like. So this is exactly what the kids would see when the kids, uh, when you would give them the link to it. And then the other thing that you need to do is you need to change the settings. So the gear next to send, We'll have it either collect their email addresses. Uh, you can restrict to Pensbury School District users, which means that they're going to have to log in anyway. Uh, so you, if you do collect email addresses, it will make them do that. Uh, if not, it'll have it. They could just have them sign in anyway. You can limit them to only respond once. This way, you, if you're posting a poll, kids just can't respond in mass over and over and over again. Uh, that way, it, they can kind of like make the poll answer what they want it to be. Or you can just make them have to sign in and only answer once. And then responders can either edit after they submit or see a summary and charts. Uh, of their responses. I always hit edit after submit just because sometimes kids hit enter when they're in a form. And if you do that, uh, it automatically submits it. So if you do edit after submit, if they accidentally submit, it'll give them a link on the next screen that says, do you want to edit these responses? That way, if they kind of submit before they want to, they can go back through and they can edit that. And then presentation style, uh, this is where you can shuffle the question order if you want to. Uh, you might not want to number your questions when you're doing it, just have them be blank because if you shuffle the question order, the number is going to go with them. Uh, you can show that, have them show a link to submit another response, but I only need them to respond once, so I can click that off. And then I can have uh, a message that says, thanks, have fun. Uh, you can put a link in here. So if you're doing this as kind of like a pre-assessment or formative assessment type stuff and you want them to then go on to another activity, you can put that link directly in here. When they're done taking it, uh, it'll say, thanks, have fun. And then it'll be a link or whatever it is that you want to have it say there pop up right after that. And then for our purposes, what we're using for Google Forms right now is as a formative assessment. So we're going to go to quizzes and we're going to just click on to make this a quiz. And from here, you have a bunch of different options that you can release the grade immediately after each submission or that you can then send them a message later on with the responses. So there's two different reasons why you would do this. One, if you don't want kids to know the answers right away because you have other students taking that, then you might want to put on later after manual review. That way there's an option under responses that you can send them an email. It will go to their Pensbury Gmail account and it will automatically give them all of the quiz, uh, their grade. It will give them uh, the questions that they missed. It'll give them the correct answers if you check that off all through that later on. Or as soon as they submit, it will give them their grade and tell them which questions they got right or wrong. And then this is where you can say they missed, uh, you wanna show them questions they missed the correct answers and then point values. Uh, if this is like a formative assessment thing and you want them to kind of go and find the answers to the questions that they got wrong, you might wanna check off correct answers. That way they don't see it. And then that way they have to go find that question for the ones they got wrong. And you'll know they got it wrong because all the responses are going to come directly to you. And then you hit save. Uh, from here, you can click on individual questions uh, which you can move around if you want to reorder them by clicking on the little dots at the top middle of the bar. But here I'm going to want uh, answer key. So I'm going to hit answer key and now I can choose the correct answer. I'm going to make everything worth one point for our purposes. And then I'm going to, uh, I went to Pensbury. That's the correct answer. So I clicked on that dot and it's there. Uh, you can make as many correct answers as you want. 
Uh, and unlike Kahoot, uh, if they have to get all of them correct in order for it to be correct. So you can do which of the two or which of the three, uh, which of the following, choose all of the ones that are correct, uh, you can do in there as well. And then you can just drop down, uh, answer key, same thing. I went to Millersville. I'm going to make that worth one point. And then I have a random question here. So I'm going to just delete that because that showed up. Uh, and then this is the image one that's underneath of it. So I'm going to click in there, answer key. And there is a Superman symbol on my helmet. You can kind of see it a little bit right there in the middle. Uh, and then I'm going to make that worth one point as well. So now I